Concept number six of the 14 we're going to look at in the two week run up to the May CFA level one window. And it is the risk neutral probability in the binomial option pricing model. Very simple model. And if you just walk through it, a pretty simple concept. So let's look at it. As always, we're going to try and understand what it's doing. So the first slide you'll see, the first setup you'll see does not include the formula. We're not just going to look at the formula and put numbers in. What we're going to do is very quickly blast through the binomial model and then see what the risk neutral probability is doing. So we have a simple setup here. You can see your price today, the up and the down factors. You need to decide on that when you put it into your model, the risk free rate. And we have a call here. So the right to buy at a strike of 65 in one period. This is a one period rate and a one period call. So you can see what's happening. If we start at 60, go up by multiplying by 1.25, the up factor, we get to 75 for the stock. And if we go down, multiply by 0.8, we get to 48. A call with a strike of 65, the right to buy at 65. If the underlying is at 75, you can buy an asset worth 75 for 65, the payoff is 10. If it goes down, it's worth 48. You have the right to buy at 65. If you hold the call, it's only worth 48. Don't do it. You allow the option to lapse. Your payoff is zero. Now, this is where the magic starts. We calculate what's known as the hedge ratio H. H is the difference in the call payoff at expiry there, which is 10 minus zero, which is 10. Divided by the difference in the underlying 75 minus 48. That is 27. That gives us a hedge ratio of 0 0.3704. Now, what does the hedge ratio tell us? It tells us how many units of the underlying we would need to go long on, along with a short call to get a hedged portfolio. So in other words, if you go H units of S minus C, because you're going short on a call, that portfolio would be hedged. Don't just accept that. Don't force your brain just to accept it. Show your brain why that is the case. What happens if the stock price goes up? Well, if the stock price goes up at T1, if you'd gone long H units of S, you would have 0 0.3704 units of a stock now worth 75. If you've gone short on the call, the payoff on the call is 10. You are short. So that's against you minus 10. Your portfolio at T1 will be 17.78. What if the stock price went down at T1? You would have 0.3704 of a stock worth 70, sorry, 48 in your hedge portfolio minus nothing. The option lapses, the long walks away. 0.3704 of 48, look. 17.78, magic has happened, we are hedged. We know whatever happens, and I say whatever happens within the confines of this simple model, you are going to end up with a portfolio worth 1778. Now, if that's the case, we know for a fact what it's worth at T1, we can work out what it's worth at T0. And given it's perfectly hedged, there's no risk. We know we have to discount to get to T0 at the risk-free rate. So at T0, our portfolio will be worth 1778 divided by 1.05. That is today's portfolio, HS minus C. Well, let's fill it in because we know HS, don't we? At T0, H is still 0 0.3704 and S was 60 minus C. We have one unknown. We can solve for it. If you solve that, C is $5.29. Okay. Okay. Almost half the video done, we've not mentioned the risk neutral probability yet. And that is one of the key points to know in the exam. We do not need a historical estimate of the probability of an up and a down movement to value this option. We've already done it. We know the hedge portfolio will be worth this. We know, therefore, we discount at the risk free rate. To be ARB free, the call option must be priced at 529. So where do these risk neutral probabilities come in? Well, all we do is work out the probability of an up move and the probability of a down move that would, when applied to these payoffs, give you 
the ARB free value of the call. And the dreaded phrase, it can be shown. It can be shown the probability of up, the risk neutral probability of up to be ARB free needs to be one plus RF minus D divided by U minus D. The can be shown is just algebra. You just work out how you get these prices. It's fairly simple, but it's long. And I don't think it's particularly useful to know because in the exam, if you forgot this formula and went through all that to solve it, you've spent more time than it's worth on the question anyway. So yeah, to a certain extent, you do just have to swallow this formula, but it's easier once you know what it's doing and why it works. So the probability of up is one plus RF, 5%, so 1.05, minus D, that's 0.8, divided by U minus D, 1.25 minus 0.8. That gives you a risk neutral probability of an up move of 0 0.5555. That means the probability of a down move using the law of total probability for mutually exclusive and exhaustive events, it must be one minus that, which is gonna be 0.4445. How do we use them? Well, it's a much quicker way than going through this whole hedge ratio calculation. You can now just say, what is the expected payoff on my option? at T1 using my risk neutral probabilities. Well, the probability of an up move we said was 0.5555. What is my payoff after an up move? It is 10 plus probability of a down move, payoff of a down move. So obviously didn't need to calculate this, but just for completeness, it is zero. That tells us the expected payoff on the option at T1 is five and a world of fives. We obviously want to value the option at T0, discount for one period, divide it by one point, risk-free is 5%, zero five. What do we get? $5 and 29 cents, which is the correct R free price. What we did not do was look at historic price movements to work out historically what's the probability of up and what's the probability of down. What we did was work out the ARB free price of the option and then set our probabilities using this formula. We set the probabilities such that when you use those probabilities, really just as weightings in an expected payoff, they give you the correct price. That's all they are. We call them risk neutral because we say, look, given that that is the ARB free price of the option, what do my probabilities, my weightings of up to 10 and down to zero need to be to make me risk neutral? They are not historic. They are calculated to give you the ARB free price of the option.